Have you ever wanted to add an intro card to the next item on a list or the next chapter of a video, but you didn't want to use the swipey swipey cards with the text? That was my case. So I set a challenge for myself. I had 13 things in a list and I wanted to get a little creative with how I introduced each one of those. So welcome back to Creator Reality. Today we're gonna to take a look at just how I did that. It's gonna use 3D text. It's gonna use the planner tracker and it's gonna use the IntelliTracker. The IntelliTracker is studio only. You do get a regular version. I did a video on that before, but today we're gonna to focus on IntelliTrack and the planner tracker. The planner tracker is in the free version. So let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And here's the first one, this text. And if I play through it, it's basically just stuck to the top of the engine on my truck. How cool is that? Oh, and I forgot to mention, I am gonna use another studio feature, Magic Mask, which I also did a video on for DaVinci Resolve 20, except we're in the Fusion page. So that link is for the old version because the old version is still in Fusion and they haven't put the new version into Fusion yet. Anyway, let's get back on topic. This was really cool. So let's dive into the Fusion page and I'll show you how I built this out. As usual, it starts with a planar tracker. If I click on it, drag and hold shift, you'll see the line turns blue, drags it back in line. Now we can see what's going on because you'll see that as I scrub through the footage, this outline window moves with it. So if we go over here, reference time is zero. We can click go, we're on the reference frame. I started and I'm using my center mouse wheel to click and drag. As we started here, this area wasn't touched by my thumb or forefinger or anything, and it was able to track it basically statically through the whole shot. There is a little bit of wobble here and there, but a man on a galloping horse will never know the difference. Now, the difference is in my planar tracker videos in the past, I've always just attached things to the planar tracker and did a four corner pin. But in this one, I did something different where I clicked create planar transform and you'll see this one popped up right here. Well, control Z to undo and then undo again. This is the first planar transform I created. And if we hold shift and click and drag, we get the planar tracker off again, out of the way, move it out of the way. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm a little silly today. Um, the planar transform that I created has all of the tracking data from the planar tracker in it. So I was able to drag that in line after my render 3D. And if you wanna see how I built the 3D text, it's right here, or you could glean the details off the screen as I show them. It all starts with the text 3D1, press one to show up in the left viewer and I used my positional and rotational controls up here to move the text around. But the big thing is it's white, but if I control mouse wheel, you can zoom in and see there's a bevel. So there's uh, several shades of gray. That's harder to say than you think. Um, we're, I know, and we're only gonna spend a, a couple of minutes on this first one, and I'll show you what's different for the subsequent clips. In extrusion, I have the depth set up and then the bevel depth and the bevel width. And with this zoomed in, I can change the bevel width and you can see how that affects our text on screen, control Z to undo. And then the bevel depth shows how much of an angle that bevel has, control Z to undo. And I left everything else alone. I did combine this with a directional light. You see it up here. If I press the one key, you only see it right there. And you can click and drag with your mouse wheel get that going. And that goes into a merge 3D1 node, which you need to combine the text in 3D light and then check the pass through lights. And then when it comes to the render 3D node, which I can press one and show you that this is where it outputs it on the frame. We have hardware render selected and then lighting is enabled. But the lighting is important because without it, it's gonna look like this. Bah, looks like garbage, much better with lighting. So all of this runs into the planar transform, which then runs into a merge node, which then goes in between our media in one and our media out one, attaching it so that it looks like this. And voila, as we scrub through, it's glued on. Now, let's move on to some more clips. They're fun to look at. You can see some of the creative solutions I came up with, but they all utilize the same stuff. So I went into the Fusion page and I literally, let me show you, I selected these nodes, 
and I press Control C to copy, and then DaVinci Resolve will put into your computer's clipboard everything it needs to recreate those four nodes in the next Fusion clip. So all I did was copy and paste, basically. The second one got a little bit different. It was a little bit hairy. There wasn't anything to track, so I used a regular tracker, and you'll notice that we still have our same four nodes for our text, and if I click on Text 3D1, press one, it's right up there but it's just a little bit different because this one uses a tracker. And after I did the tracking, uh, operation match move, and then done. It was right there where I needed it to be. And this is where I brought a Magic Mask 1 in. I probably did it on the first one when we skipped it. I don't know, go back and look, tell me what I missed. But using Magic Mask 1, I was able to come in here and there's a couple of spots where right there, you can see that my hand, and I'll zoom in here, my hand gets in front of the text. And Magic Mask did a wonderful job of just keeping my hand in front of that text like that text was glued to the part of the engine. So that was solution number two. Solution number three, this one gets really interesting because my camera did a shift of focus. So it went from focusing on the trees in the background to focusing on my hand and back. So let's take a closer look at this one. This one's a lot of fun. This one again uses the planar transform like I explained earlier, and I just left the planar tracker sitting there. It uses the magic mask, but it also uses a lens blur node, which I do believe is a studio only feature, but it's really cool because I keyframed it. So again, we have our four normal text, except Showing this one on the left viewer, I use a light blue, but because of the lighting, it gave it kind of a shadowy look. And since I didn't explain it earlier, if you change the rotational values of your light, this one doesn't do anything, but then changing this one, you can see our text goes and does some weird things because I'm using different, uh, different, ro different axes of rotation. So anyway. Lens blur, so I keyframed it. So what I did was, you'll see these four keyframes right here. I scrubbed through my footage, and you'll see that right now the camera is focusing on the background, but then right about here, it's gonna start focusing on my arm. And you'll notice that by this frame, now my arm is sharp and the background is blurry. Well, to sell the effect, you wanna add that lens blur in. So let's take a look at that. With lens blur one selected, you'll see that my blur size is 2.5, and then over here, at this uh, first keyframe, it's zero. And if you wanna set a keyframe, just click on this icon here or click it again. And since I'm still here, I'll reset that keyframe so that it goes from sharp to a little bit blurry. And you can drag the blur size up and down to match the blur, the bokeh of your camera. Control Z to undo. And then right about here is where the camera's focus shifts from my arm back to the background, so by this frame, you see that the focus has shifted, and so has my text. Isn't that cool? So now, not only is the text tracked into the scene, but it matches the bokeh, or background blur, of the plane that it's tracked to. Speaking of which, over here in my planar tracker, we can click go to go to the frame where I started tracking. Notice this says 23. I'm not at the start or end. I found a plane that it could track fairly well throughout the entirety of the clip. So you'll see that my plane window is right here. And if you don't understand the planar tracker yet, please watch my video. I'll link it below for planar tracker. Then you'll understand all of this stuff. And it's really cool to push the limits of what the planar tracker can do for you or IntelliTrack, et cetera, et cetera. It's how you learn and resolve. Anyway, are you learning anything? Boop the like button. Show me you care. But I got this one to track and it tracked all the way through with that background plane. And sometimes you have to track more, sometimes you have to track less. Speaking of which, let's go track something else. And I sort of cheated here. This one is tracked to just one thing with the tracker. It's tracked to this little label. If I click away from there, it's tracked to this little label right here in the frame. And I use this for a bunch of them. But again, if I control mouse wheel to zoom in, Magic Mask sells the effect that my hand is in front of this text, and I think it's just a really slick way of adding in this intro card text stuff without having to uh, extend the runtime or do any other sort of fancy-ish nonsense. Anyway, moving on. This was an interesting one. 
I tried like heck to get it to track to the hood, but it's a reflective surface, so it wouldn't work. Let's go into Fusion and see what I did there. Again, it's a planar tracker, but look at this one. It didn't even track the whole thing. So with all of this, you can see where we're at. We'll click go and we'll go to the frame that I tracked where this plane is mostly visible, right? But then as we come back, it gets less and less vis uh, visible. And it kind of means that we have to do something special on this one. Plot twist or spoiler alert, it is keyframing. So in the merge, we have settings here and you'll see that we've got keyframes. Let's go to the first one. I keyframe the blend of my merge from the planar transform, okay, into the basic workflow here. I keyframed it to zero and then over here at frame 60, it has faded in. So in between that, it's gonna fade that text in and then it's really nicely tracked to the top of the dash. And then right before the end of the clip, it is faded back out. So I set those keyframes again, very important stuff. And then that melds well into the next clip, which just continues on with the same dash, but that way it's not popping in, popping out. Moving on. This next one's fun, and you can already see that I used Magic Mask here, but it gets a little more interesting than that because I didn't even use a tracker in it. We have our normal four uh, 3D text nodes and then a transform node. So what I wanted was for the text for this one to follow the truck like it was tracked to the truck, right? Let's see how I did that. Again, it's keyframes. So you'll see with transform one selected, I have a keyframe here and then another keyframe right there. So if we go back to that one, this one gets interesting because the truck doesn't leave in a linear fashion. By default, DaVinci Resolve's keyframes will work linearly. So if it goes from zero to one, or zero to one across four frames, it'll be 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and one. That's how it works. But there's a spline editor in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Let's take a look at how I utilized that to make this effect work. If we come up here to spline, and then we want to select transform one, we can click this button here to show all of them, and you'll see that they are smoothed out because I used my F key. If you right click on a keyframe, we have flat and smooth, but I use the F. And then if I control A to select them, this one's a little bit shorter than the last one. So I want this uh, movement to start out a little bit faster. And if I hold Alt and grab this handle with my left mouse button, you'll see that it only lengthens or shortens the curve. I brought it back here so that it started out a little bit faster and then got slower towards the end. And then as I scrub through the footage, you'll be able to see that the text is gonna start moving with the truck. And it looks like it was tracked to the truck, when in fact it was not tracked to the truck. Ha <laughs> ha, cheater, cheater. This next one's kind of interesting. You can see that I wanted to track this text to the top of the door, right? So let's dive into Fusion and take a look. Our normal uh, 3D text is there and then it goes to a regular tracker. You can ignore the planar tracker here and the tracker one there. I, I spent like four hours doing this and trying to get all these to work and it was a lot of fun, but it was kind of frustrating too and I sort of left a mess behind. Anyway, the one that's actually attached is tracker two and you can see that I found this one point to track right here through the whole thing and this is in the plane of what I wanted to track. So as we go along, you can see that the text moves with that one little um, that one little pixel. And then Magic Mask, of course, lays on top of it and we're good. The next one up is this one where it attaches to my dash. That's pretty cool. We used a planar tracker again and we have our planar transform. But if I go back to planar tracker one, you can see that my set point is 64 frames in. This is really important in here because you want the tracker to have the best shot possible at tracking through your entire clip. And in this case, it could track most of it through most of the clip. And it did a really good job of affixing that 3D text to the dash of the truck. And of course, right about here, it loses it because my finger got in the way. And that's no big deal because I used the keyframes on my merge over here. I used them right again to get from zero there to one there. Or when you're playing it back from one to zero, fading out. 
And that was a real fun one to try to get to work because there's a lot, there's just a lot going on on that one. But let's go to the last one. This one's pretty cool because, wait, the text was red. Now it's white. So more keyframing. If we go into Fusion, this one's fun. We have our normal 3D text. And if I bring it up in the left viewer, you'll notice that over here in my inspector, if you don't see it, click on inspector, the color is keyframed. So we go to this frame here, it's white. And then just two frames later, it's going to be red. So it has that intermediary frame, like I mentioned earlier, this is a linear keyframing, and then it's full on red. So I did the planar transform as usual, and this all worked well, magic mask, of course, in there. And I was able to track, let's take a look at what I tracked, this plane up here. So again, it was the trees in the background, so that as the camera moves around, it's tracked with those trees in the background. The cool thing about this is that I worked it in with the sound design of me closing the hood. So if I alt mouse wheel to zoom in, you can see right here that I took the audio instead of being processed in, in this off bike track. Don't worry about the names. It doesn't make any sense to me either. It does. I, I made that change myself. Um, I brought it down here to where it was unprocessed or processed as a sound effect. And the keyframe lines up with that sound. So it starts white and by the time the hood closes and makes that noise, it's now red. So this two frames kind of sets the thing off. See the, the hood's open and then it's closed. It makes the noise and it changes to red. How cool is that? Isn't that pretty neat? Anyway, this is just a, a fun way that I found to challenge myself and to just kind of better my understanding of how the trackers in Fusion work. And if you got anything out of this video, please let me know in the comments below. I do hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate your time watching today. If there's something else you want to see me cover and resolve, please leave a comment below. Maybe you'll consider liking the video and subscribing now. I don't really know. Or you could just watch this video next, or you could do both. But this is another one of mine where you're bound to learn something. Anyway, I hope you're having a great day. John out.